Welcome to session 23 on failure criteria. In this session, we will have three parts, and the first part will allow us to talk about safety factors. And we did actually discuss this very briefly in a previous session, but we'll have a chance to do more examples and, and go through what safety factors are in much more detail. The second portion will discuss a modified form of the maximum normal stress theory for brittle materials. This is called the Moore criterion. And essentially what it does is it allows us to account for the fact that brittle materials often have a higher ultimate compressive strength than they have ultimate uh, tensile strength. And in the third portion, we will discuss probably the, the most famous and potentially most common uh, criterion for ductile materials that you will find yourself using, especially if you do finite element analysis in the future. And this is called the maximum distortion energy criterion for ductile materials or the von Mises stress criterion, uh, Henke, Maxwell, Huber, um, they're all uh, connected to this, this, this final criterion. And that last part of this session will kind of take us through what we're going to discuss for failure criterion or failure criteria in the mechanics of materials. Well, let's go ahead and continue. <clears throat> Now, there's really only one slide here about uh, factor safety, but then we'll get into more detail when we do examples. We need to specify forces or stresses that are allowable <clears throat> when we design a structure. Well, maybe we don't need to, but uh, when it comes to people's safety and things of that nature, there need to be at least estimates. You know, if you're going to your backyard and doing something, you're like, okay, I can get a couple of two by fours or a few two by fours, do some, some cutting, put them together, nail them together, and you know, voila, it's a birdhouse or whatever it is. And you don't think, oh, what's the safety factor here, right? But chances are it's pretty high. Even if you're making a bunk bed or something of that nature, not commercially, of course, but, you know, for your own uh, use, we have a general sense that we can pick up certain materials, uh, raw materials in particular forms, like two by fours or, or, or other uh, pieces of, of metal or brackets, and we just kind of know that they are going to last. And this is because we we're intrinsically over-designing our solutions. When it comes to aerospace or refined civil or mechanical engineering applications, it's necessary to do more calculations like what we've been doing in this class to be able to understand and be able to prescribe how safe something might be. And in reality, because we can't do this perfectly, we put in a fudge factor, we put in a factor of safety. It's not possible for us to understand every possible load. It's not possible for us to understand how exactly our structure is going to degrade over time. But these factors of safety, these safety factors or factors of safety allow us to kind of have a little bit of a, a wiggle room, a budget, if you will. So one way to think about the factor of safety is what's the force that's going to be associated or what's the load associated with failure? And what are we going to allow, right? So we say, oh, no, nope. you can't weigh over, I don't know, uh, 30 pounds for this particular car seat for a, a, a baby or a toddler, right? Um, but I really know that it's probably going to handle, say, you know, 60, but, and that would give me a safety factor of two, but I'm going to specify that you have to be under 30 pounds. I don't know if that's what they use, okay? So don't quote me on that. I'm just throwing that out there. Okay, so when the, the force, okay, uh, associated with the physical or, or mechanical failure of a structure, okay, that's in the numerator, and then in the denominator we put an anticipated or specified load of operation. 
And we can do the same thing with stresses, whether they be normal stresses, whether they be shear stresses, whether they be equivalent stresses, which we'll discuss in session three. Now, typically, we're going to be thinking that we want a safety factor greater than one. Okay, you don't necessarily want safety factors less than one because essentially you're just say, you're saying that it's going to your allowable stress is going to be greater than your uh, stress of failure or what the mechanical system can hold, and it's going to fail pretty much every time. Okay, so these are the loads. The numerators are the loads or the stresses when physical or mechanical structure will actually fail and then in the denominator we have like the anticipated we have the anticipated or specified as stress for operation and another way to think of this in terms of uh, factor of safety or safety factor is what is the stress associated with failure divided by what is the stress when you're operating this or what it will experience with the wind hitting a structure what are the stresses that you anticipate? And they should be less than what the structure will actually fail experiencing. So the, the questions can also have somewhat confusing wording and we'll go through some of this uh, today. And also it's good to think that you might or we might be able to redesign. We might be able to thicken, for example, a structure or a wall and then be able to increase the safety factor or make it so that that particular structure will not fail. Now, even though we have these high safety factors or factors of safety, we also have a, a lot of tools to be able to do simulations and to calculate what's going to happen. Products have planned obsolescence, and I've talked about this a little bit before, and if you want to look at a nice video by Veritasium on YouTube, you can get an idea of what this planned obsolescence might look like in today's types of products, and also light bulbs, uh, which have been around since the time of Edison. So, Let's do an example. We have here a specification for a brittle material with equal ultimate compressive and ultimate tensile strengths at 100 megapascals. And we are going to look at the load on an element of 50 megapascals. And we're going to say, or we're going to ask the question, will this particular element, maybe it's a critical element in the structure, fail if we have a safety factor of three with the criterion of maximum normal stress. So what do we do? Well, we can say that we have sigma one is equal to 50 megapascals and sigma one it needs to be less than some sigma allowable. Well, that sigma allowable is given by a safety factor, right? Where we say, okay, when will actually fail? Sigma fail divided by sigma allow. And what is our sigma fail? Well, our sigma fail is actually the 100 megapascals that we, that we have here, okay? It's the sigma ultimate. And then we're saying, okay, we still need to figure out what the sigma allowable is to see if we're going to have issues or not. So sigma allowable is just going to be this sigma ultimate divided by three, that's 33 megapascals. So do we anticipate there being failure? Yes, we do, right? Because this sigma one that we have, according to the maximum normal stress criterion, is not less than the sigma allowable, right? So if we had a safety factor of one, right, we'd be fine, okay? But if we have a safety factor and even if we have a safety factor of two, okay, we'll be right on the border, right? Because then our sigma allow would be 50. But here we're above, so we're going to have a failure, or we're not going to be satisfying the specified safety factor. Let's do another example. 
here we have an element under pure shear. Now we quickly draw a more circle to see that the maximum normal stress is going to be 30 megapascals. When we look at what we calculated just a minute ago with our sigma 1 having to be less than a sigma allowable, we can say, well, the sigma allow was 33 megapascals, our sigma 1 is 30 megapascals, therefore we don't expect failure or we're satisfying the appropriate safety factor that we have here. Let's look at another system. This one has a normal stress, we call it sigma x, and we have a tau xy possibly with 15 megapascals of shear stress. We draw out a more circle, we get something that might look a little bit like this, where the sigma average is 15 megapascals, that's right here, and this is going to be the sigma x comma tau xy, so 30 comma 15, all right? And if we're interested in the maximum normal stress, we've got to be out here at this point, okay? And so sigma 1 is equal to this average 15 plus what is the radius, okay, or what is the hypotenuse here? That comes out to be 15 squared of 2 because it's the same length, right? It's 15 this way, it's 15 this way. So that's 36 megapascals. Sigma 1 is what? Is it less or greater than? No, it's, it's greater than the allowable, which is 33 megapascals. So once again, we expect that there, there might be failure or that we're not satisfying the requirements for um, an appropriate safety factor. Well, or the specified safety factor. It's hard to say whether it's appropriate or not. It's just what we've been given in this problem. Okay, so here's a question that you get to do for as an assignment. We have an element with sigma x equals 100 megapascals, sigma y is equal to minus 50 megapascals, and the other stresses are equal to zero. And the question now is, what is the safety factor according to the criterion of maximum shear stress? So not maximum normal stress, but maximum shear stress, so that's Tresca, if the material has a yield strength of 200 megapascals. So in this case, it's asking, we're asking, or I'm asking, what is the safety factor? Okay, so that's one question. And the next question is a little bit of a design one. It has a pressure vessel here, and we're specifying radius, thickness, and pressure. Uh, and we're saying, hey, there's, a, there's a, a, a yield strength associated with this material. And if we use the absolute maximum shear stress, okay, and um, that, that's Tresca again, what's the safety factor? Okay, um, and if we uh, want to ensure safety, by what factor should we have multiply the thickness that we get safety? Okay, so um, this is a, this is a, a fun question. Well, maybe not that fun, but it's one that that you'll get to do and and uh, and enter some results in, in Canvas. And so that concludes our first portion okay, of session 23. And I hope you come back for part two. Thank you.